Hey look, it's my Tuesday video, even though it's absolutely not Tuesday anymore. I have no excuse this week. <laughs> Sorry. Let's just say my channel schedule is twice a week, probably Tuesday and Friday, sometimes Wednesday and Friday. Apologies for any strange background noises that the background music doesn't disguise. They're still doing road work right outside my house. They said it would be 8 to 10 business days at the beginning of June. Hello and welcome back to Jenna Gets Creative. It's a new month and that means it's Colors of the Month time. I'll explain what that means and go over this month's colors in just a sec, but first, if you're new here, please consider hitting that subscribe button before you leave. I'm a freelance editor, illustrator, and book reviewer, and this is where I come to make art with commentary, review books and art supplies, talk about bookish things, and collaborate with fellow artists. If that sounds like your speed, I'd love to have you in the club. We're pretty chill here, <laughs> just enjoying our creative hobbies. And no matter who you are, subscriber or newcomer, please consider helping me appease the algorithm overlord by hitting that like button and leaving a comment. All right, colors of the month. Back in 2018, there was a monthly three marker challenge series called the Copic Colors Challenge, and it was organized by Imagination International, who were North America's exclusive Copic product distributors. They used to sell custom marker sets of the month's featured colors, three sketch markers or three chows plus a 03 size multiliner in a complementary color at the same price point. And that's actually how I got started with Copics. I bought the August 2018 chows and multiliner pack and I was hooked. Unfortunately for Imagination International, Copic's parent company restructured and removed middleman distributors, so these guys had to change and the challenge changed with it. They became Marker Universe, the challenge became Colors of the Month, and there's a new twist on the challenge every January, but the essence of the challenge stays the same. Use one, two, or all of the challenge colors. Add black and white if you wish, blend and dilute if you wish, but don't use extra colors. This year, they're naming four hex code colors and saying go for it, use whatever medium you wish, including digital, and not officially suggesting colors of any particular brand, technically. But you can find a challenge page in their shop where they list all of their current stock that suits the challenge. Their challenge names for July's colors are Rosaline, Chrysolite, Turquoise, and Amethyst. They're definitely going for a precious stones and gems theme, but Honestly, the promo image on black in the subscriber email makes the colors look more pastel than they are. I really wish they would start putting their sample swatches on both black and white backgrounds. Challenge color Rosaline is hex code EC719A, also simply called pink. Their shop stock possibilities for this color are Karen Brushmarker Pro 168 Rose Pink, Karen Pigment Deco Brush 183U Rose Pink, Graphit 5130 Camellia, Tombow Dual Brush 723 Pink, Grapho 5120 Princess Rose, and Sketch Marker Salmon Pink. I'll be using Karen Brush Marker Pro 168 Rose Pink. Challenge color Chrysolite is hex code 82CBB0, also called Mint Green. Their shop stock possibilities for this color are Karen Brushmarker Pro 377 Ocean Teal, Karen Pigment Deco Brush 340U Ocean Teal, Graphit 7280 Peacock, Tombow Dual Brush 373 Sea Blue, and Grapho 8140 Emerald. I'll be using Karen Brushmarker Pro 377 Ocean Teal. Challenge color turquoise is hex code 0C8890, and most sources agree that this color is called turquoise. Their shop stock possibilities for this color are Tombow Dual Brush 407 Tiki Teal, Karen Pigment Deco Brush 3145U Turquoise, Graphit 7240 Turquoise, Karen Brushmarker Pro 654 Turquoise, Sketch Marker Green Verditer, and Grapho 7260 Indian Ocean. I'll be using Karen Brushmarker Pro 654 Turquoise. Challenge color Amethyst is hex code C571AD, also called Light Purple. Their shop stock possibilities for this color are Karen Pigment Deco Brush 2405U Red Lilac, Graphit 6140 Lavender, Tombow Dual Brush 665 Purple, 
Grapho 6175 Amethyst, Sketch Marker V71 Perfect Plum, and Karen Brushmarker Pro Neon Red Lilac. My Karen set doesn't have the neons, so I'll be using Karen Brushmarker Pro 358, which is the regular non neon red lilac. Interesting palette for sure. Let me know in the comments down below what you would do with these colors. I was torn between going super literal and on the nose with the gems theme and going way off with something else that wouldn't normally be these colors done in an otherwise semi-photorealistic style. Which one did I go for? Look at the screen. I'm not sure yet. I'm recording this voiceover before I paint once again because that's how I roll these days apparently. I can say I'm probably using a mix of techniques with these markers, primarily painting with separate paintbrushes, and I'm probably making use of my new favorite mixing service, a dollar store ceramic plate. <laughs> Seriously, pro tip, not all of your art accessories need to be expensive. Most of my mixing surfaces are dollar store ceramics and repurposed plastic lids. Ceramic is great for watercolor and gouache because it doesn't beat up too much, and a white surface really makes it easy to tell exactly what sort of shade you've mixed with transparent watercolors. Plastic lids are great for thicker paints because you can flex them to help flake off the leftovers when it's time to clean. I'll be sure to list the paper I ended up using along with any other pencils or fine liners you see me using, maybe even the exact brushes if I remember that, in the description box down below. I definitely haven't talked long enough for a decent length video yet, and I don't want to put the footage in hyperspeed to fit, so let's have a little chat, shall we? <laughs> I'm a little miffed today. Why? Thanks for asking, I appreciate it. My town is considering putting gates on all of the parking lots and lanes at all of the local parks so they can physically close the parks at night. This is a coastal small town with a very outdoorsy culture to it, and most of our public parks are beaches. There's literally nothing else for teenagers to do after like 9 p.m. because the bowling alley and arcade has slot machines and a full service bar and it goes 19 plus in the late evenings. There's no theater in town, you have to drive into the city. The community rec center shares a parking lot with the town hall and would be affected by these public park gates. The library keeps short hours. If you push the kids off the beaches and the ball fields, you're going to have them loitering in fast food parking lots and elementary school playgrounds. Yeah, that already happens a little bit, but not as frequently as it'll happen if there's no other option, and not in the crowd sizes we're going to see if that happens. Let's also not discount the fact that the public parks and beaches are where young people and old people go to kill time when they want to avoid being home if life isn't great or mental health sucks. And these are also great inexpensive date locations. Now everybody's gonna get kicked out at 11 p.m. sharp, even on weekends and during the summer months. It's a repeat of when they banned ATVs from the public trails and put up barriers, but never followed through on the alternate ATV trails they promised to build instead, so now they're cracking down on all the ATVs being ridden where they shouldn't be, but there are literally no other options. <laughs> In a province that's otherwise quite friendly to ATVs, and you used to be able to cross the whole island on one if you wanted to. And let's not forget to mention that gating these public spaces is a stupid idea for budget reasons too. Not only is there the cost of purchasing and installing these gates, but somebody has to lock and unlock these things, presumably every day of the year. If it's one person, then you've got to consider that this person is going to be paid to not get eight hours of sleep at night and never take a vacation, because these gates are proposed to close at 11 p.m. and open at 7 a.m. and it wouldn't make sense to keep them closed on holidays. If it's multiple people to balance out the schedule and have different areas of town covered by different people, then it's multiple salaries, still at non-standard working hours, including weekends and holidays. And all of this because the residents who live close to these beaches have been complaining for years about speeding and littering. I don't see how gates will fix that. <laughs> this town has a serious lack of regularly serviced public garbage cans, which is why there's a litter. As for speeding, well, they're not planning to block off the roads, are they? Just the parks? The answer you're looking for is speed bumps, and maybe traffic enforcement patrols in known problem areas at strategic times. But all of this is not why I'm so miffed. Why am I miffed? Well, the town made an online survey to get out opinions on this, and when they posted it to Facebook, they encouraged us to share it around. I did. 
a former co-worker from my time on the other side of the country filled it out and came back to my share of the post to comment telling me she'd done so and how great community gates are. I reminded her we don't live in the same city. She said she knows and she talked more about gates. And then she asked if I wanted gates. I said no quite emphatically, with exclamation marks. I then asked her why she would knowingly respond to a municipal opinion survey for not her town, and pointed out that it's a small town and her outsider response could skew it, and she negated my opinion, the opinion of an actual resident. She said, well, it let me, and I like filling out surveys. <sighs> Go sign up for one of those services that pay you pennies on the minute to give your opinion on all sorts of bullshit. Don't respond to another town's call for resident feedback on proposed developments and projects that don't affect you. It doesn't matter that you like gates, you don't live here where the gates are going. What do you even do with people like this? Generally speaking, this is someone I really respect and even defer to on certain topics, and I didn't expect her to pull such a care and move on something like this. Anybody else have similar stories? If you're looking for more to watch, I've got some suggestions up on the left side of the screen now. Don't forget to like, comment, maybe even subscribe, and if you like living life creatively, whatever that means to you, I'd love to have you along for the ride. Bye, guys.